I just wanted to do a quick run through of a new utility I've added to the Swingbench um, family of utilities, SQL Builder. Um, and the aim of SQL Builder is to simplify the process of creating benchmarks. Um, in Swingbench today, you can add transactions or extend transactions um, using Java to create your brand new class or um, PL SQL by extending existing PL SQL stubs um, that I ship with the product. And that's all well and good, um, but one of the problems uh, I've seen and one of the queries I've had from users of Swingbench is that they don't have a great understanding of Java and in some instances are of PL SQL. So SQL Builder tries to fill that um, gap by providing a utility which enables you to easily put together um, SQL statements to start with, select statements to start with, um, and build them into a full-blown benchmark um, and you can extend it and remove and change it as you see fit. It's a simple process. Um, the SQL Builder dialog enables you to specify SQL statements um, and the parameters that are actually used by that SQL statement. What will happen is that it will take each one of those um, SQL statements, it will save them to a configuration file and pass it to the swing bench dialog and you specify that as that the location of that configuration file as an environmental variable. Swingbench then has a special class of transaction that I've created inside of Swingbench 2.6 called Statement Runner. It will take the configuration file and whenever it comes across a parameter, it will parse that parameter and replace it with um, the value specified um, from within the SQL Builder dialog and then it will execute for all intents and purposes exactly the same way that Swingbench executes today. It will report on the transactions, it will provide you with statistics associated with those transactions and so on. The important point here is there is no requirement to go through and have any understanding of Java or PL SQL to build, build out your own workload um, to do your testing against. So before we go any further let's uh, take a look at how this uh, whole uh, uh, utility works. So what we can see here is if we go into the directory that we have our SQL Builder utility. So all we need to do here is to um, launch it, don't need to specify any parameters, and we'll get a simple dialog. This dialog is made up of uh, three main components. On the left hand side you've got the location where you'll see the SQL statements you've created and the parameters. The right hand side, top right hand side is where you'll edit and place your SQL and below that is where you specify the parameters for those SQL statements. The rest of the icons along the top are self-explanatory, largely self-explanatory. If we want to create a SQL statement all we need to do is to enter the text on the top right hand window um, and in this instance we're just going to use a simple select one from Joule and then if we want to create another one again um, we can go through. In this particular instance, let's add a um, parameter, and the parameters are specified with anything um, with a colon and uppercase text straight after it. So in this instance, param1 will be our first parameter. And I highlight all of the parameters in pink. To add, a, Then we go through and add a parameter to that individual SQL statement, giving it exactly the same name that we specified before. And you can reuse parameters. Then we indicate the type of um, value we want replaced in that and it could be a string or date or an integer and it could be a random or in this particular instance let's use an enumeration of values. Having done that um, that's all that we um, really need to do. We can save this file as a configuration file that will be have its values replaced or we can even export it as a string literal so it will have fixed values specified for us. Let's save it as test1.xml Okay, now we've saved um, that file, we can come out of the dialog builder and if we look inside of the directory, there's the file that we've just created. Now, I made a, a mistake inside of this configuration file on purpose. It gives us a chance to take a look at the configuration file. Um, it's fairly straightforward. There's a small XML snippet for each one of the SQL statements that we've created. And if we've got parameters specified, they'll actually have some children associated with that. In this particular instance, I'm using string literals and I've specified a data type of integer, which would give us a runtime error. So in this particular instance, I need to change that value to um, a string. So let's come out of um, uh, the configuration file 
and go back into SQL Builder. All I need to do to re-edit it is to give it the name of the configuration file that I specified, test1.xml, and it will launch it with the configuration passed. So if I go back down to that parameter, I just need to change its data type to string. In this particular instance, I want to quote the strings um, as well. And that's it. That's all that we actually need to do. So we can resave our statement and now um, we can go into Swingbench. Now, one of the things about Swingbench is that I've shipped a whole load of new configuration files um, for Swingbench. And there's a dialog that will launch every time you start Swingbench without explicitly specifying a configuration file. Now, I don't have a config file for um, SQL Builder at this moment of time, but TPCDS like workload also uses exactly the same process. So all we need to do here is to go to its environment variables in the configuration file, change that value to the name of the file that we just created, in this instance, test1.xml. And then we have a choice. Um, with statements run mode, we can either specify that serial stepped or uh, run through as a uh, random. So randomly run the transactions in whatever order they occur. So um, that all looks good. And um, all that's left for us to do is to check that we first can connect to the uh, database, in this instance, the connect string. I clearly at this stage could go through and change any of the other parameters, number of users or anything else I want to specify. I can connect to the database. But before we do, let's just point out this transaction. You, to actually run this configuration, you need a class of transaction called statement runner. And once you've got that statement runner, it will be looking for that configuration file that's specified in the environment variable. Every time a new SQL statement is executed, it will be alerted in the events file. So our two new statements are fired. Um, we actually get uh, an information alert to see that they have been successfully parsed and executed inside of our code. And that's pretty much all that you need to do to create your own user-defined transactions uh, for SQL Builder. And if we look in the output, you'll see um, our transaction results. The first one will be statement runner. That's just a stub and you can largely ignore it. But the transactions listed below it will be for the SQL statements that we've just created and very simple. And so they'll execute very quickly inside of our code. So that's it. That's all that you need to do to build your own uh, transactions, to find your own queries to execute um, code uh, with uh, SQL Swing Bench. Thanks very much.